Well, hello there, friend. Glad you stopped by. This is my entry for Agmashwa's Cursed Conlang Contest 2. If you don't know what that is, then I am so, so sorry for what you're about to witness. Please, prepare yourself. So this all started on the 5th of September in the year of our Lord, 2023. I was scrolling through YouTube and came across this wacky looking video. The video intrigued me because I have absolutely no experience with Conlangs or linguistics. I heard the word phoneme for the first time that day and was gloriously amazed by what I experienced. Two days later, I found out that there's a second contest, and the deadline is due in just over seven days. So, I crammed as much knowledge as I could about conlangs into that small cavity inside my head I call a brain, and came up with this bad boy. So sorry if I get some terminology wrong. Now I had a few goals for this language. I wanted to make a language that was easy to read, easy to write, was easy to speak, and was entirely hypoallergenic. As you'll see, I succeeded at one of those things. Oh, by the way, you'll get to know how to actually say the name of this language later in the video. I just like to keep some suspense. So with my goals out of the way, let's start with the orthography for the number system. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why the heck is he starting with the orthography for the number system and not just listing phonemes or structuring grammar or something? Anyways, this language uses a base 26 number system. We'll need to be able to write down these 26 digits into characters in the language. But wait, remember how I said I wanted the language to be hypoallergenic? Well, fives rhymes with hives, so we simply must get rid of all of them. <laughs> ah, that's better. Now this is still a base 26 system, so numbers with a 5, 15, or 25 in them still hold value. They're just literally impossible to directly write in this language. But hey, as long as we're allergy free, we're succeeding. So I'm going to change these numbers into a more conventional naming scheme, like so. Now, give them another number to correspond to using this table. Okay, sweet, we're ready to begin writing. We always start with a circle. Now, ignore that red line on the right side for now. We'll cover it in a second when we get to talking about grammar, but it is necessary for these to be proper orthography. Let's take those numbers that we got from earlier and draw a line at the angle of that number in radians. See? This corresponds to a zero. From there, we have one, two, three, four, not five, six, seven, and so on. Those are the numbers. But what happens if you combine multiple numbers in one circle? Well, that's how you make words. I'll explain. You see, in English, and most languages, we use letters as an index even if we don't realize it. A dictionary simply lists the indices and associates those indices with their meaning. The circle does the same thing, only instead of letters being in the index, it's the angles of lines inside the circle. For example, this means dog because it has these two angles as indices. For the sake of not drawing hundreds of circles, the short dictionary in the description has these angles converted back into numbers and letters via the table shown earlier. There's one more problem. How do you indicate index order within a word? If we just did ascending order by angle, we'd end up having very large words very quickly. So we need to be able to sort of jump around the circle in any specified order. The solution, color. We want to construct a color gradient such that order is determined by the order of colors in said gradient. Here's the gradient for this language. I'll dive really deep into how I made this in a future video, but basically I used Bezier curves to draw the word lol in 3D space with the Z coordinate oscillating throughout, then converted those coordinates into RGB values, and voila, we have a gradient. Isn't it beautiful? The important thing here is that if you pick a point on the gradient, is entirely unique to every other point on the same gradient, even if some do look similar to it. So you can find a color on the circle and find its index on the gradient, then do that with all colors and order that, boom, you can now indicate index order. Oh, and one last thing before we move on to grammar, when you have multiple words in a sentence, you draw them inside each other and the sentence is read from the outside in. Okay, on to grammar. Remember that extra red line from earlier? Well, the line defines the part of the speech of a word and can be found in up to 13 places around the circle. Yep, more angles. Here's the table to convert parts of speech into angles. You'll notice present and future verbs don't have any subtenses. 
There's a noun three category for just extra nouns laying around the sentence, and infinitive gets its own angle. You'll also notice some parts of speech just don't exist in this language. You're welcome. So yet again, how do we figure out which parts of speech go to which word? This is actually important because indexes in this language only yield the basic forms of the respective words, so words that can take on different parts of speech or different tenses need to be changed via these lines. The easy answer is using color because we've already established a system that could easily solve this problem. But nope, we're using line lengths, and this time in descending order instead of ascending order, so bigger lines correspond to earlier words in the sentence. All right, let's speed run some remaining grammar rules. Conjunctions are considered prepositions. There are no articles, there are no phrases, though some individual words can represent phrases. Word order is OSV with nouns before adjectives and possessive versus possessor. Possessives are marked in the grammar circle by a shaded triangle over the respective word and are treated as nouns within parts of speech that act as adjectives in sentence order. Negation is marked by an empty triangle and plurals are marked by a perpendicular line. There's only one swear word in this language and it's marked by an empty circle, so its index is null. We'll get back to that later. Now that we can write sentences in our language, we can translate its name. It roughly translates to, wisdom is a circle. What you receive, you must give back. Which I'm sure is a quote you all recognize from the 2002 animated classic, Hot Wheels World Race. There was something in the ancient inscriptions. Wisdom is a circle. What you receive, you must give back. Okay, let's head over to phonology. You might have noticed I've yet to actually pronounce any of these words within the language. That's because this language is entirely tonal and pronounced exclusively through Desmos graphing calculator. You see, by hitting Alt-T when having a graph selected, you can hear your graph played by Desmos. The note pitch is relative to where the graph is on the screen, so higher Y values correspond to higher pitches. Remember to keep your screen size locked to x between 0 and 20 and y between 0 and 13, otherwise it's ungrammatical. So now we just need to map words to specific and unique functions to generate meaning and structure from these sounds. Just as a warning, if you don't like math, good, that's going to make this part so much more cursed for you. So as we established earlier, each word has a unique index and part of speech. We can utilize that again for the phonology, but converting each into a base and a function respectively. The base determines the sort of macroscopic pitch of the word, while the function determines how the pitch varies within the word. The base is determined by this function, where s of i is the index of the word in base 10. Those with some keen eyes laying around may notice that this function leads to a lot of lost information as the number of possible values the base can take is less than the number of values s of i can take, but we will correct that in a second. The function is determined by the part of speech the word takes on. Here are the functions for each part of speech. Notice plural is factored in with the nouns and negation and possessives are separate. This is because negation is multiplied by your part of speech when applied and possessive is added. You'll notice the actual generation function is a bit more complicated than what I've discussed so far. Well, most of the extra stuff is just ways to keep the implementation versatile for my sake, but this exponential term is also based on the index. It's here because its value is unique for all indexes, so you therefore get a unique sound for each word, which is important so we don't lose meaning. Just as one final note about this language before we start hearing sentences, I mentioned earlier that there's one swear word in this language. Well, since it has a null index, its pronunciation has to be constructed manually. Its function is just y equals 12.9. Luckily for all the children in the audience, that means the swear word censors itself. Okay, now that we've set up the phonology, let's hear what the BMP script looks and sounds like in this language. According to all known laws of aviation, the B shouldn't be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway, because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. So one last thing you might be asking yourself is, yeah, that's great and all, but I'm deaf and entirely colorblind, so how do I communicate with this language? 
Well, it is a pretty easy sign language as well, based on the phonology. Simply raise your arms such that your elbow height relative to your waist is the same as the base height is relative to the Y values on the decimal screen. Then, adjust your arm based on the function of that word. Here's how you say, cannot be the most interesting person at this Olive Garden. So, awesome! You've learned this beautiful, cursed language. Enjoy!